What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Big 2988 coming at your lives again through the power of the internet. And let's just be honest, gaming in 2021 was not its best. I, I feel like this generation is off to a bit of a rocky start. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit today. Uh, let's look at some of the good and the bad of 2021. The biggest problem I think most of us faced in 2021 is trying to get a hold of some of the newer hardware. And it doesn't matter if you want an OLED Switch or a gaming PC, a PlayStation 5, an Xbox Series X. They're just hard to come by and you're going to have to jump through some hoops to get them. Basically, getting a gaming console at retail price is almost impossible now. You have to find a retailer that's selling it at retail price and then get super lucky and catch a restock. And if you don't do that, you're going to end up having to get it through a reselling website like Amazon or eBay or one of these places like that. You're going to end up spending a lot more than that console's actually worth because of the shortages. The problem also persists even if you're a PC gamer and you're trying to get into PC gaming. If you're looking to build your own machine, it's hard to get those PC parts. But the good news is I have a sponsor that can help you with that. Meta PCs has PCs in stock right now that can ship out the next business day. And if you use code Boogie, you can save a huge chunk of change when it comes to buying one of these PCs. And look, in my opinion, with both PlayStation games and Xbox games coming to PC, now is the best time to invest in a gaming PC. And that's where me and Meta PCs can help you. Instead of spending a ton of money on one of these resale consoles, consider investing in a gaming PC and play all of those games anyway. Use the link down in the description box below. Go to metapcs.com, use code Boogie while you're shopping and save some money. And now back to complaining about video games. Now, when it comes to gaming exclusives, it was kind of a wet fart year. Uh, there's definitely some good games. Halo Infinite was absolutely fantastic, in my opinion. Microsoft Flight Simulator made it to the Xbox Series X. Forza Horizon 5, one of the best racers and the best open world racers of all time. So these are great games for the Xbox. It's just, uh, there's just not very many. Oh, also Psychonauts 2. Psychonauts 2 was incredible. PlayStation, likewise, didn't have a tremendous number of exclusives, but Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart did very well. Returnal was hard but fun. Deathloop was very interesting and unique. Uh, some definitely okay exclusives for PlayStation as well. Nintendo's exclusives, also not great. Uh, Metroid Dread was fantastic, but a lot of people complained, saying it is just a 2D Metroid. Uh, Monster Hunter, a new Pokemon Snap, which is actually a lot of fun. Super Mario 3D World got republished, but this time with Bowser's Fury. And that's about it for Nintendo. When it comes to your franchise games, uh, multi-platform like Far Cry, the latest Far Cry is a nightmare. Call of Duty Vanguard certainly had mixed receptions. And it kind of makes sense, I'm with the staffing shortages and all the other problems that 2020 faced, the games that came out in 2021, weren't going to be great. Uh, the good news is indie games though. Indie games are mm, better than they've ever been. And I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that people are getting bored with games as a service, especially when they don't put as much effort into those games as possible. Your yearly franchises, your persistent online games, they're so monetized, their gameplay is repetitive. People are just getting bored of that and you can definitely see that in terms of the critics as well as the players. I mean, obviously there was that major upset where uh, Game of the Year went to It Takes Two, which is just a, a bizarre and creative and interesting game. And even if you do not want to play it yourself, I highly recommend you do what I do, which is watch a couple people play it on YouTube because that is a wild ass game. It is so different than I was expecting it to be. Even if you don't have a persistent partner to play it with, it's a game worth experiencing it by experiencing it through one of your favorite YouTube couples. But when you look at a lot of top 10 lists this year, you're going to see some re-releases like Disco Elysium and Hades finally coming to other platforms. But you're also gonna see a lot of indie titles that are new for 2021. Like Unpacking was a just relaxing and fun game to play. Inscription is a great game if you're into card games, to at least watch the way I did. Uh, there's so many cool and interesting and bizarre games that came out this year that completely break the mold that were made by people that were stuck in their homes during COVID. And with uh, Game Pass both on PC and on Xbox and then as well as PlayStation, I mean, you can play most of these indie games for that one time a month monthly fee instead of paying $15 or $25 for that game itself. You pay $15 a month for the PC Ultimate Game Pass, whatever the hell you call it, and then you have access to all of these games. I played a lot of these games because they were on Game Pass. I would have never downloaded them or streamed them otherwise. So I, gaming is fantastic right now.
When I was a kid, if you're my age or remember this, you would buy one video game, right? And that's the game you got to play because you owned it. And occasionally you would get to go to the store and rent a game. Uh, and that was the best way to play a game because you didn't have to spend that initial $50 investment to play the game. You could just rent it for a couple of bucks for the weekend. Uh, that's what Game Pass allows me to do. That's what PlayStation Now allows me to do. And I'm just so excited to do that. It's turned gaming into Netflix, which is something I've always wanted. And now I can try this bizarre, unique, weird game without worrying about wasting my money because the money's already spent for that membership. And everything is great. Unpacking was great. It really was just a lot of fun to just unpack all of that stuff. You should try it. I think it's going to be on my top games list. In a lot of ways, gaming is in a bad place. It's in a really weird place. And at the beginning of this year, I wasn't feeling it. I was playing like no video games whatsoever. But starting in the fall, I started making up for Lost Territory. There's still a few games I need to play. Marvel's Guardians Galaxies, uh, Resident Evil Village. A few games that I bought and paid for, downloaded and haven't played yet. But I've been playing the catch up, especially with these indie games. And I recommend you do. Because Damn, there's some cool experiences out there. It's especially difficult because we're in this transitionary period of gaming. I feel like, I'm hoping, that the money will stop being in games as a service like the Avengers and we'll get more games like Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, there'll be less Call of Duties and Far Cry 6s because they sell less than they used to and there's going to be more innovative and interesting stuff like Deathloop and Returnal. And I think 2022 looks really, really good in terms of weird, interesting exclusives. I mean, 2022, when it comes to the high-end games, looks like it's going to be incredible. Horizon, Dawn, Forbidden West looks fantastic. Fantastic. Elden Ring doesn't look like it's my type of game because it's too difficult, but I know a lot of people are excited for it. I love Saints Row, and I'm a little bit worried about whether or not this is going to turn out to be games as a service, but I'm hoping it'll be good. Starfield, finally getting our whole hands on Starfield if it doesn't get delayed. A Bayonetta 3, God of War, Ragnarok, Marvel's Midnight Suns is finally coming out. The Breath of the Wild sequel, I mean... We're almost there, boys. We're, we're almost there. We've been waiting for these games for years, and now we're getting there. And that's not including all of the weird, bizarre indie titles that we know are coming out. Now, if you're a viewer of this channel, you know that I took most of 2021 off from talking about gaming news and talking about video games, and it's just because I wasn't feeling it anymore, and I think this was a good year to take off. Not a lot of great games, not a lot of big news to talk about, and the news that there was to talk about was extremely depressing. Not stuff I want to spend my time talking about or even thinking about or even recognizing that happened, whether it was Blizzard or uh, uh, Ubisoft or uh, it, it just let's just not even talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. But I feel like with my current passion for gaming coming back, I feel like with 2021 being the lineup that it is, that if we can avoid the bad news, if we can avoid all of the terrible news, Blizzard and Ubisoft, Maybe I could be excited about gaming again, and maybe you could be excited with me. So I would like to take a look back at 2021, talk about the best games, talk about the worst games, talk about the bad experiences, and talk about the games that I'm anticipating forward. And I hope that you'll stick around for those videos. I'll be sure to put them in a playlist here on the channel so you can see them moving forward. Until then, guys, as always, thanks for watching. I love you very much, and I will speak with you again soon. Happy, happy gaming. Happy Oh, I remember happy. Yeah, looking forward to that. Thanks, gaming.